chucks the basketball. It sails clear over the net, hits the roof of the rec hall behind the court, and bounces off into the lake. Kobe! Oh my god, it just, just chucking the, hits the roof of the rec hall and... Uh, how strong is Belle? Oh, that night. Okay. Damn, you just like got knocked out by the basketball and you're dreaming about birds suddenly. Oh yes, hockey player, this is my shit guys, okay? Hockey, I love it. Go Habs, go all the way. I love Carrie Price, like I'm gonna ace this dream. Okay, I'm ready, let's go. You dream you're a hockey player in an open roof arena filled entirely with bird people. Your bar bird coach scrutinizes you closely as you skate beneath the bright pink sky. More pink! Hmm, what is the symbolism of pink? It will probably give me some foreshadowing. Okay, let's go. This is the usual run of the mill thing. State your job title. Hockey player. And what is the fo function of a hockey player? To bash some heads, to get shots on the goal, to rag the puck? What? <laughs> Bash some heads. It's all about getting out there and bringing the hurt to the other guy, coach. You gotta bash some heads. The purpose of the hockey player is to inflict a violent assault on other hockey players? For sure! <laughs> Very well. Demonstrate the behavior of a human hockey player. You give a sharp nod and skate out into onto the center ice. A bird player from the other team is waiting for you. Dun dun dun. A pulling player. Our group of individuals is the most skilled at moving the small rubber disc from one location to another. <laughs> what a nerd! I'm gonna taunt them. Yeah, well, your mama lays eggs. That is an anatomically cor incorrect. Oh, correct statement. <laughs> the self drag. Like, what is this? <laughs> okay. You and the opposing player cross your sticks. The referee gently places the puck down on the ice. What? Okay, on the ice and blows his whistle for five straight seconds. What? This would piss me off. If this happened, I'd be like, why are you whistling for five straight seconds? That is a lot. That is, I'm going to count right now in like, like, one, two. Three, four, five. Like, that is so annoying. I just fight the guy. I'm gonna fight the referee. I'm gonna fight everyone. You throw down your stick and shove the opposing, opposing player. What is the meaning of this? I wanna fight, that's what. The entire ring breaks out into a brawl. Oh, it's like, uh, you know that hockey game at uh, the junior championships? There was this huge brawl. All the players got in on it. I don't remember what year, it was a, like a long time ago I guess, like I wasn't even young. <laughs> and there were so many players that got into a fight that in the arena, they actually blacked out the arena, like all the lights went off so that the players would stop fighting because it was such a like bloody brawl and like the refs couldn't stop it. And this is exactly what's gonna happen in Birdland, guys. You know what, the, like, hockey history for you guys, all you Americans that don't like hockey. Or Canadians who love hockey, but didn't know that because I didn't know that until a while ago. Okay, <clears throat> back on into this. Pairs of playing players from opposing teams grab each other by their jerseys and slowly spin around. Very well. We will now engage in the fist fighting aspect of the hockey game. He ta takes off his claw shaped gloves and puts up his dukes. Punch him, headbutt him. That can make you, uh, oh, well, if you have a helmet. No, wait, did you throw down your stick? You didn't take off your helmet, so you could headbutt him, but your neck would die. Um, I'm trying to think of the best choices all the time, but it probably doesn't matter that much that, like, punching him or headbutting him. It's both hitting them, and I probably fucked myself over by starting a fight <laughs> with this dream, and I won't be able to do a bunch of things that I want to do. So, yeah. Let's just punch him. Anyway. You toss off your gloves and punch the other player right in the beak. Hell yeah, you hear the crunch of his hollow face bones. I am experiencing the pain sensation. The referee skates over and points at you. 
You are convicted of the crime of violence. You will be penalized by removal of the competition for a period roughly equivalent to one two hundred. What an eighty eighth of a rotation of this planetary body around its axis. What the fuck? <laughs> this is an incorrect decision. I launch an appeal. I punched him in the face. Why are you defending me? <laughs> I love this. This is like space hockey. There's no grounds for appeal in a sporting event such as this. Actually, coaches do that all the time. Like, this is all messed up. What the heck? This is an exceptionally frustrating turn of events. You skate into the penalty box and spit out your mouth guard and throw my water bottle like P.K. Zubat. Um, coach peering over the top of the box. Box. Of what benefit was this behavior? Guy was looking at me funny. This is how you play. Um... Yeah, like, the reason why I started a fight because I was pissed off, like, it was taking so much time, I guess, so that'd be the closest thing. And in actual hockey, it kind of is like this. Like, you just freaking start a fight just to, like, make the game more interesting <laughs> sometimes. So, yeah, it was looking at me funny. Had to sock him one. And this violent behavior terminated the humorous look. He'll think twice next time. So you have made him more thoughtful. Another whistle blows for five seconds, and the play starts up again. You look up at the scoreboard. It's tied at an illegible number of goals with illegible seconds left in the final period. Do or die. Put me in, coach. You know I'm your best quarter <laughs> quarterback. <laughs> Would that be a, the optimal stratagem at this time? Sure. No. <laughs> he said court. I said quarterback, and it's hockey. <laughs> and you are permitted to complete this, to compete despite your previous infraction. Probably. Very well. Thanks, bud. You skate onto the ice and immediately get on a breakaway. Hell yeah. Pfft, I can choose to score a goal. Well, yeah. A puck appears on the end of your stick. Ooh. Eight ball. Corner pocket. I don't know that term. You swing the stick like you're playing lacrosse. The puck sails through something that's probably called the five hole. It lands right in the net. A goal has been scored. Game complete. Fireworks go off as your bird teammates all skate up and bump into you with their hands up. Pretty, pre, pretty soon you're in a cluster of hundreds of teammates all with their hands up. They pick you up and crowd surf you back over to the bench where your bird coach is nodding his head in approval. Approval. You are victorious. Just gave her. Indeed. Thank you for your demonstration, hockey player. Have a pleasant morning. Oh, man. What is going to happen? Oh, no. Lowered, lowered, normal, heightened, heightened, very low. Oh, no. Oh, I'm bad choices. July 15th, morning, nature area. Okay. Yay, Mackenzie again! Mackenzie is poking at a mushroom-covered log with a stick. Hey, Bridget, do you think these mushrooms are ed edible? Uh, maybe they will eat those. Hmm? Oh no, I'm not going to eat them. I'm just conducting an edibility survey. Belle walking up. Hey, guys. Oh, hey! Hi, Belle Woods. I'm not looking up. So is Belle, like, evil to everyone else except you? I wonder. Mackenzie is conducting a survey. Survey. Belle crouches down to look at the mushrooms. So, edible or no? Do you just mean, do you mean just edible or edible and also won't kill you? Hmm. Cassidy Woods clapping her hands together. That is the... Woods teacher. It didn't even give if what class we're in. Clapping her hands together. Okay, little ones, are we all ready to look at some leaves? Capers murmur. Lovely! We're going to break off into pairs today. Everyone partner up. Okay, partner with Miss Kenzie. Partner with both. Wait for one of them to ask. Think they'll let us do a three-person partnership? And you know what? Why don't we mix up the sections for once? If you're a junior, find a senior. If you're a senior, find a junior. And if you're an inter, you should not be here for this activity block. Okay. 
That sounds like a no. I don't know, maybe one of us could kneel down and pretend to be an 8 year old while the other two put on a big trench coat and pretend to be a single 14 year old? She bites down on the stick. What? She's holding the stick? Okay. On the stick and looks off into space. We're going to figure, have to figure out who has the best knees and who has the best shoulders. True this, Bell Mackenzie, you are so practical. I love you, okay? Bell winks and then walks away. You watch as she disappears into the crowd of kids. Oh. Okay. Next time, Kenzie. What? No, I, I want them both. Okay, yeah, you're right. We don't even have the trench coat with us. True. Okay, find a junior. Well, I'm going to go find someone to babysit. Okay, I've just got to give this a bit more thought. You walk into the mass of campers. Okay, so it's just like the mass of... Hockey, that like we're playing. Cassidy is hustling around trying to match the younger kids with the teens. <clears throat> Let's see. Ah, Bridget, you take this little one. You look down. Cassidy is holding a junior girl's hand. She lets go and rushes off to deal with something else. Hi, I'm Bridget. I'm seven. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> little kids are so cute, guys. Right? Poking you in the stomach. Do you like Frozen? Yeah, I love that movie. Very cute. Good. She pokes you again. Do you like Minions? Um, Minions are fine. Yeah, I'm with you on that. They're okay. Good. She pokes you even harder. Do you like Minecraft? Uh, no. I don't play Minecraft. Sorry. Oh, that's weird. You're gross. Why are you even alive? <laughs> oh my god. Mmm. <laughs> I would, I'm, oh my god, that was funny. Um, I have to tell a story now because one time I was volunteering in this art class and this little seven-year-old was like, um, do you have a boyfriend? And I was like, no. And then she was like, oh, that's good because that would have been gross. <laughs> that reminded, that conversation reminded me of, of that, the one that Bridget had with the little junior. It was very cute. Okay. You, Mackenzie, and Belle meet up with some other girls from your section as you walk down to the docks. So, which inanimate object do you think we're going to be learning respect for today? Paddle's usually a safe bet. <laughs> Maybe life jackets this time? We haven't really talked about life jackets yet. That would require actually going into the water, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. You get to the docks and see Dan... Standing waist deep in the lake. <laughs> then again, <laughs> campers assemble. I almost uh, misread that as asshole. I'm like, campers, asshole. Like, <laughs> what? Okay. You and some campers from other sections gather at the edge of the dock. Today, I intend to deviate from standard practice in order to conduct a brief examination. You look over at Belle. She shrugs. Before I begin, I must make it unambiguous, <laughs> FML, <laughs> unambiguously clear that I am fully aware of the answers to all of these inquiries. This is merely a test to see what knowledge you have thus far acquired. Have I conveyed this information with clarity? He's the guy in the dream! Oh no. Okay, this is what um, Zoe was talking about. All the teachers are just becoming robots, man. Oh no. I don't know what to do. Okay, the campers all sort of nod and mumble in agreement. Very good. Now let us commence. What is the purpose of the canoe? I guess let someone else. You stand there for an uncomfortably, uncomfortably long time. Finally, some intermediate boy timidly puts up his hand. Um, well, with the canoe, you like get in it and move around and stuff. It's a thing you go in, like, when you're here. <laughs> Some of his bros pat him on the shoulders like, nice bro, good answer, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Killed him. A good answer indeed. You are passing this test masterfully. Now a second question, which I again already know the answer to. What is the purpose of the canoeing class? To teach us how to canoe. We're supposed to go in the canoes and paddle around. Excellent. 
Then today we will enter the canoes, utilize our paddles, and transport ourselves over water. I will observe this from ideal vantage point. You're not gonna go with them? Like, what if one of them drowns? Oh my god. Commence! Take a new canoe out by yourself. Take a canoe out with Mackenzie. Talk to Belle about how weird that was. Yeah, because Belle will totally notice that because she's a detective. As everyone else starts getting in the canoes, you walk over to chat with Belle. Okay, that was really weird, right? I guess. You guess? Look, if you watch people for long enough, you realize that they're all super weird all the time. Weird is normal, and Dan in particular has been weird all summer. This is just a different variety of weird. That doesn't worry you? Seems harmless enough. She nods her head over at the campers getting into their boats. I mean, if anything, he's closer to a normal instructor than he used to be. I just figured you'd be more detective -y about this. Same! Hey, I'm on vacation. No sweating the small stuff. Now quit stalling and get in a boat. Okay. Hmm. What if I did it by myself? I wonder what would happen then. Yeah, I want to know. But Mackenzie is so nice. And you know what? She's good company. So let's see. it. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I just read the first line. Okay, then. Hey, Mackenzie, do you want to... And she's paddling away. Huh? Oh, sorry, you were talking for so long, I figured I would just go off solo. Do you want to just jump in? You stare at Mackenzie as she paddles a bit closer to the dock. It's probably fine. Yeah. Okay, sure, no problem. Easy, it's just like stepping into, uh, something. <laughs> yeah, it's actually really hard to step into a canoe, like, it's, it, it, it's just, you have to know how it's, yeah. You sit down, dangle your legs off the dock, and then hop into the boat. Unbalanced. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. It's okay. Just sit down. You sit down. The entire canoe rocks back and forth. Bridget, how are you doing back there? We are not okay. Oh. Okay. We're going to tip, we're going to tip. We are going to tip. As you think so... As you think, so you become, Bridge. If you keep saying we're going to tip, then we're definitely going to tip. Okay, okay, we're not going to tip. We're okay. We're good. A tiny wave rocks the boat. Oh, Christ, I lied. We're going to tip. <laughs> the canoe tips over. As you fall into the lake, Mac this is what I'm talking about. What if they drown? As you fall into the lake, Mackenzie deftly leaps out of her seat and scrambles over the side of the tumbling boat. When you surface, she's sitting cross-legged on the top of the capsized hull. You brushing her wet hair off out of your face. How the hell did you manage that? Kind of just happened. Tow the canoe in, get back on. Um, I don't know what that means. That just means that you go back on land. And Okay. You shouldn't swim all the way to land because you might get tired. Alright, well... You grab the canoe and start swimming back to shore. Want to help? Want me to help paddle? No, I've got it. Okay, that's good because I lost my paddle. LOL. Hey, is this swimming class? I could have sworn it was canoeing. <laughs> Asshole. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm mean, but like that's just funny. Ha! At least I actually went in a canoe today, temporarily. Anyway, I'm improving my skills through observation. It's a classic detective technique. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're so observant, how come you didn't detect this? You splash her. Ah! And you laugh. Aw, that's cute. Don't think I won't get you for this. You swimming away from the dock. You're welcome to paddle out and try. Oh, you want paddles? She grabs a paddle and starts trying to splash you with it. Dan looks on, nodding in approval to himself. See, this operation seems to be proceeding in an orderly fashion. Did you not see them fall? What is this? Okay, this guy, I pray he is still not a robot, okay? Because he was um that hippie guy. Anyway, Logan is fast asleep at the front of the hut, occasionally muttering something about art. Taylor M. rifles through the supply cupboards as a bunch of other girls from the section sit around chatting. 
I don't know, do you think I could make some kind of substitute out of this stuff? Spinning a pencil on her fingers. I mean, I guess that depends on whether or not you want to look like someone with finger paint all, your, all over your face. Mmm. I just don't understand why it's banned in the first place. Like the hair straightener thing, I guess because it's a fire hazard, but no makeup? That just seems random. No skirts, no crop tops, no cookies. It's all girl stuff too, huh? They didn't ban anything that guys are into. What, like dick jokes? That'd be tough to enforce. Ooh, speaking of things that guys are into. Great raining. Oh my god, listen, but don't get him wrong. Well, that means interrupting her, right? So true too, like the why did they ban makeup at the camp? I mean, I get it, because you're going to be doing sports stuff, but usually you have common sense not to put, like, tons and tons of makeup on if you're doing sports. Like, hey, let's get right in on this. You turn your chair towards the conversation and listen in. I happen to know that a certain tailor who will remain nameless was chasing a certain boy at a certain dance last night. Taylor C. rolls her eyes. Ooh, interesting. Tell us more. Oh, I couldn't possibly. Whatever, I don't care. It was Mason. Oh, gross. What do you mean, gross? He never showers. None of them shower. However little they shower, he showers less. Look, whatever, the lake is basically just a big shower anyway. <laughs> it's a bath. Also, ew. What do you think, Bridget? He's gross. He's fine. All those boys are gross. Amen. <laughs> I don't know, I think all of those boys are kind of gross, honestly. All of them? There's got to be someone at camp you like. Oh, uh. Oh, yeah, tell us. Oh, my God. Uh, because I like Belle, right? Probably. Or Mackenzie, maybe. Or Zoe. Zoe was cute. I don't know, you, she was nice to you. Okay, so... N it's n we know that none of them can be boys, so it's just, like... Okay, uh, they're gonna deny each of these and be like, no, that's not true, you're blushing. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I just, it hasn't come up, I guess. Oh, come on, you've never thought about it? Never, honestly. I don't want to talk about it. Fine, whatever. Well, you could just lie, yeah. Okay, fine, whatever. I have a crush on... Taylor Am's leaning forward in her chair. She's so ready to hear it. Nathan, I love... Also, I love how there was, um... <laughs> different, like, five different ums <laughs> to choose. Nathan? <laughs> Val raises an eyebrow. Oh, she knows you're bullshitting. She knows, because she's a detective. Don't say anything, Bill, okay? Uh, Bell. Whoa, Nathan? Seriously? Why Nathan? He's attractive, he's smart, he's funny, he's uh, the whole darn package. <laughs> he's smart, he's, um, yeah. He's, uh, you know, what don't I like about him? The group looks at you expectantly. For example, um, he's got a good face and I like how he dresses. You like the tearaway pants? Yep, that's a thing I definitely remembered before right now. <laughs> Wow, never would have guessed. Yeah, I had no idea. I can't wait to tell. Taylor C loudly clears our throat. No! <laughs> Nobody. Can't wait to keep this a secret forever. Silence. Excuse me. She gets up and runs out of the room. I'm sure that's unrelated. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there. Hell yes! The shades and the bird and the comb over and the outfit. I love this already. You dream you're a musician at a festival attended entirely by bird people. Oh, god damn it. Your bird manager scrutinizes you closely as you sit backstage beneath the bright pink sky. State your job title. Musician. And what is the function of a musician? To entertain people. To express yourself, to get laid. To express. Music is the language of the soul, man. My soul wants to get out through my mouth and out into the crowd. 
that the, does not align with my understanding of human anatomy. What I'm saying is I use music to express myself, let people know what's in my heart. The purpose of the musician is to communicate the musician's emotional state right on. Very well. Demonst demonstrate the behavior of a human musician. Cool. A bird stage manager runs in, clipboard in hand. You are scheduled to perform in exactly one second. Damn it! I have no time. You take the unlit cigarette in your hand and grind it into an ashtray as if extinguishing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> None of these make sense anymore, okay? Time to make some magic. I thought the aim of this occasion was to create music. The two words are similar but quite distinct in meaning. You run out on stage. Did I misunderstand? Do not inquire this of me. I am no closer acquainted with these concepts than you are. Greet the eyes. How y'all doing tonight? I said, how y'all doing tonight? And you said, we are doing well. <laughs> wow. We are Bridget and the Extended Metaphors. <laughs> and we're going to start with a little song I like to call School Days. Birds of Love, Glad. What? I guess these are references to something. I don't know. Hounds of Love by um, um, that girl. I forget her name. My mom loves her. I don't care. You birds of love. This one goes out to a special someone out there. Um. Uh, yeah. So I know there's there's a song called Hounds of Love by um. Oh my God! I forgot the name. She does running up that hill. That song. Oh my God! But I don't know the lyrics. So let's just say that. Sorry, face the other day. It looked just like a pretty bird. You ought to, okay, why am I doing the bread neck eggs? I saw your face the other day, looked just like a pretty bird. You had a beak and everything, you really made me want to sing. Uh, let's keep going with the lyrics. Hear the sounds of birds and love whispered in your ear. They're the only birds that I want you to hear. Birds of love. I don't know, <laughs> I'm making shit up, okay? I saw your face today as well. In fact, I see you frequently. I think that's cause you live nearby. Your bird face makes me want to fly. Hear the sounds of birds of love whispered in your ear. I'm literally putting birds in your ear. Birds of love. Oh, birds so high and birds so low. Sometimes birds, they come together. Sometimes birds, they... <laughs> How long is this gonna go? Sometimes birds, they come together. Sometimes birds, they come apart. The obvious rhyme here is with feather. What is that rhyme? What's in my heart? What? Oh, yeah. Okay. I saw your face the other day and I'll see it again, I'm sure. Just want to reiterate. Your face is birds and birds are great. The audience applause. Thank you. Thank you. The next song is called Gonna Dance A Lot. The Lord is, g the Lord is good to me. <laughs> Put your hands up. Put your hands up. This is a song with explicit instructions, so please try to follow along. Okay, this would be like, okay. Put your hands up. Put your put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your put your hands up. Keep your hands up. Keep it keep it. <laughs> That's hard to do. All the ladies, put your hands up. All the fellas, put your hands up. All the non bi the non -bi binary folks, put your hands up. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Oh my God. Let me hear you say, whoa! <laughs> let me hear you say, whoa! Now let me see you say, hey! Now let me hear you say, yo, whoa again. <laughs> I am having so much fun. Okay, everybody, in the main lodge. In the main lodge, put your, <laughs> what? Put your hands up at the swim dogs. Put your hands up in my cannon. Put your hands up. Keep your, keep your hands up. Up, 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 put your hands there. Up, 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 put your hands. Oh my god, this is hard to sing. I'm gonna give up now. Alright, we got one last song for you tonight, and it's called A Lie in My Heart. Get it out. Hate. Hate. You hate. This is a song about me. Aw. This is sad now. What the heck? I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate my god and self. Hate, 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 hate. Fucking goddamn it, motherfucker! I am the worst person on the planet Earth. Ah, hate. Careful, it's one minute drop. Ah!
Ah, this audience applauds. Thank you. You've been a great crowd. Leave. Good night. Leave the stage. That was really sad, actually. You leave the stage. The stage manager hands you a bottle of water, which you down all at once. Clementine Creevy. Backstage for some reason. Hey, great set. Thanks. The other members of Cherry Glazer murmur in agreement and pat you on the back. I find this perplexing. You have concluded your performance, but the audience remains in their seats. Yeah, this is the encore. You go off stage for a while and then come back out and play another song or two. And what is the purpose of this action? Is this not an inefficient mode of music delivery? That's a good question. In unison, we request an encore. We request, request an encore. That's my cue. Later, dude. Okay. We got one more song for you tonight. This one's called Birdland. And a one, and a two, and a... Living in a dream world where nothing creates... I don't know. I'm, I'm, I can't make shit up like this. Living in a dream world where nothing quite seems right. It makes... Your eye is drawn to a single human being in the huge crowd of birds. Suddenly, everything feels off. It makes you something, something, and I um do stuff. The human shouts something at you from the audience, but you can't make it out. Belle? It's her. She applauds. Everyone else boos. We articulate our displeasure with this musical performance. We had expected to see an event more to our liking, and that expectation has been thwarted. We are experiencing a feeling of entitlement to high-quality entertainment, followed imme immediately by intense disapproval of the low-quality entertainment before us. Run away, please. Run away. Is this another encore? No. Pack up the van. Of what relevance is ground transportation to this scenario? We are displeased. We are displeased. Hey man, this whole situation went wrong real fast. We got a jet, now. There's no need. Thank you for the demonstration, musician. Have a pleasant morning. Oh, I can't wait to see. Oh my god. Everything is heightened or lowered. This can't be good. Look, my guile has been lowered for the whole game, I think. Oh my god, I'm really sad. I'm really vigilant, I'm um, not very peaceful, not very, um, I think guile is confidence, not very confident. Okay, I think that's going to be it for this episode. So next episode we're doing July 16th and we're going to know more about what the fuck are these birds and why are they here and why are they doing tests on everyone. So goodbye!